welcome back to the epic conclusion of October Scarefest. What do you have to say about it? Welcome back. <laughs> this is uh, on you, by the way. This what is? All, is? The, all, all, the, the length of this episode. The, uh, seven uh, hours. It's all up to you. Seven <laughs> hours. You got it. <laughs> we are doing for our Halloween episode, Freddy vs. Jason. We have talked about this movie a couple times. I don't know if we talked about it on uh, have we on air. <laughs> this is a first for me, dude. There's some stuff that I'm sure we've repeated on these podcasts like a million times. Oh ever. yeah, and this is a big movie because two epic heavyweights. This is a very epic movie. I remember when this came out. This was huge. I think it made. I mean, I don't know exactly. Huge. It made like 50 million opening weekend. I remember something like insane. Well, like it was that. all the internet buzz. Was like, is it gonna yeah. happen? Well, it was like. Basically, uh, rumors and fan fiction galore had been going since Jason Goes to Hell because that was the first introduction of Freddy. Yeah, and yeah, and it took what? Let's see, Freddy or that Jason Goes to, to Hell was like ninety nine years. One? Nine years. Because how does Jason two? Goes to Hell end? Was uh, it- the 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 glove pulling down the mask, and then it's like. <laughs> Does he laugh? Yeah, dude. He does exactly that. If somebody could edit the scene in that what movie, what a weird end with Hanta's <laughs> bizarre thing he just did. <laughs> so yeah, um, history with this movie. I know me and Matt saw this in the theaters with uh, oh, wow. brother and the father. What did cool. uh, did you see it? I uh, saw it on the internet. <laughs> internet? You mean like illegally downloaded this? Like we're not talking about that. Oh, this is like Napster days, isn't it? Yeah. No, this is oh, a wow. I've been Napster days. I don't wow. know. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I, I may or may not have. Been I'll using. never tell. I remember we <laughs> we, uh, we begged Dad to go see this one. Man, this is this is a big one. We were excited for that, and because you know horror movies have always been big in the family, and so this was like an epic event for us. And I think when we saw it, the power went out. If I remember correctly, oh, the yeah. epic conclusion to the franchises <laughs> right before they're about. <laughs> dude, it's right before they're about to fight. The power goes out. Was it what? really? <laughs> yeah, dude, you want to hear something really whack? So when oh, they who are going way back now, they had a bunch of advanced screenings of this movie. Yeah, and for the advanced screenings, the movie stopped a minute before it ended, and it said, "If you really want to see who wins, see Freddy vs. Jason when it comes out in theaters." So for the advanced oh, screening, they showed like a uh, teaser. Stick no, or? you saw the full movie up until the last sixty seconds. What? And it said, "You want to see who wins? See the movie in theaters." Blah blah blah. No, no. Yeah, that's not a thing. That's what I read. I think you're reading some IMDb. fake ass. That's what I read. I, I think the oh. fakest of the fake IMDb trivia. It was for uh, it was test audiences and advanced screenings. They did that. I do. I did read that there was actually like a lot of different endings that they tested for audiences, and they were really? like, "What the fuck?" Did you guys I, know any of the endings? I've never yeah. heard of it. Uh, there's one where I think, like after the bat, like the big fight, Will and Lori finally have sex, and then like during uh, when they're doing it, uh, he kills her. What? And it's like, I think like it's supposed to be like Freddy possessed him or something because he possesses the stoner dude. Earlier. Okay. But it's like he possessed and people were confused. Like, did he become bad or like, did he, was he possessed or like That's something weird? People ending. are so confused about it. They decided to scrap it, but I think they actually filmed it maybe. Oh, yeah. right. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, this is a, uh, I need to be trivia. You know how, yeah. uh, Oh my AR. Dude, we gotta quit going. Like, I it's used our to... only source for trivia. We have to I use know. it. It's, it's actually pretty good. A lot of it's pretty accurate. It's like our TMZ were like, well, I heard this is. Yeah, it's know, all hearsay now. It <laughs> yeah. sucks. There was an ending that they originally did. Um, they couldn't get a deal with like all the studios and everything. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, it was yep. supposed to be Freddie and Jason go to hell, and then uh, Pinhead from Hellraiser shows up. And he says some long lines of um, meat snacks. Who wants meat snacks? No, that's not. Yeah, that's who wants not, all yeah, the freshest meat snacks in the world? That no. sounds like Hellraiser. Yep. <laughs> word for word. No, he says some like uh, what seems to be the problem or yeah. something like that, and which would be kind of a cool ending. It would yeah. be cool, but it's, yeah, it, I guess it was just like securing the rights was the issue, you know? No, yeah, I agree. I wish it would have been something like um, like they go to, like they go to hell, and it's like um, it's like Bill and Ted. You know, which is weird. They're falling like... forever. <laughs> they, so they become friends and they start asking each other trivia. Yeah, you want to play twenty questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, a stretch for. It's weird because it's kind of a stretch for these two to battle. So it's like I can't imagine including any other monsters well, in it's there. It's a stretch, but they they did it. Yeah, but I can't imagine like yeah, Pinhead being in there and other. chains going everywhere, and you're like, this yeah. is just a, what well. A I mess. guess it would make sense because I mean, it's just it, for an it, ending. But he's not really in. He's not from hell, is he? Or is that? Pinhead's not from hell. It's like another dimension, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it is. It's like another dimension. It's like Cenobite World. It's supposed to be like a or... dimension of pleasure. 
Yeah, ooh, pain. Ooh, where you have all the meat snacks in the world. And you have all the meat snacks. <laughs> so basically, so Freddy vs. Jason, and we're looking at the time period when this came out too, is basically Celebrity Deathmatch, the movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> or or it's uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh. Which, Wayne, fun trivia, this is not Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Freddy vs. Jason. But in Mortal Kombat X, which came out last year, they are two playable characters. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have their fatalities and everything. That's cool. What are the yeah. fatalities? Um, I think, I feel like one is like the sleeping bag one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, right. Everyone is a sleeping bag. Yeah, that's terrible. Man. It might be. I, I'm not really sure. I know but... there's one where he split somebody in half with a machete. Yeah, I think from, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. one too. But, pretty, um, those, those fatalities are so brutal. I, they they, are, they're man. actually like, uh, if you like go back to the first one, it's actually, they're not as bad as they like were... Uh, I mean, they're still killing people, but it's not really yeah. bad. But if you look look at the ones like from Mortal Kombat X, yeah, they're like super brutal. Really, really, like to the point where it's like, all right, this guy's dead, but they just keep going. <laughs> it's like this guy's been dead for fifteen minutes and you're still going at it. <laughs> it's 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 hard to watch. Okay. Um. All right. Well, let's go and dive into the movie. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how we get the Mortal Kombat. After, how do we get the Mortal after Kombat after twenty on minutes? Oh right. yeah. So the movie starts up and it's a New Line Cinema movie. Is New Line still a studio? Uh, I actually don't know. Wow, I don't know. I can't remember the last New Line movie I saw. That's Money I Talks. <laughs> Money Talks. That's the, one, that's the last one I saw. Dumb and Dumber. I remember uh, Dumb and Dumber's New Line Cinema. Rush, Rush Hour series? The Mask. Yeah, The Mask was one. Um. So, uh, wait, how did New Line secure the rights for Freddy and Jason? It must have been a haul and a half, dude. Because yeah. isn't... Because Paramount. Paramount owns yeah. Jason. Yeah, Paramount owns Jason, and then who owns Freddy? New Line. New Line. Because remember, uh, New Nightmare was New Line. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, and Wes yeah. Craven's on New Line. No, yeah. Scream and everything. Because Nightmare and Elm Street was one of the very first, was actually the first big movie for New Line. Cinema. I don't know if it was the, I don't know when they ended up linking up with Nightmare, like when Nightmare ended up linking up with uh, New Line, but I remember specifically New it's Nightmare. A, no, it's the first one. Really? Yeah, yeah I was just They watching. were around since the 80s? Yeah, no, like, I was surprised me, I just watched that four hour long documentary. And they talked about New Line Cinema being like an independent huh. uh, distribution. Nice. Distributor. And yeah. um, that was their first big movie was Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, wow. So yeah, I guess because I don't remember and... like the... I always remember the iconic, like, iconic. Yeah. Uh, How ironic. Yeah. <laughs> How ironic. Intro, like the opening, you know, like thing for New Line. Yeah, the, the original's weird looking. But yeah, it's, I can't imagine the one for the 80s. Yeah, it's really weird looking. So, okay, so the movie starts off. I have never had the entire plot to movie explained to me within the first minute and 30 seconds of this movie. A la every single Friday the 13th movie ever made. Well, kind of. I feel like with this one, you find out who Freddy is, and yeah. then you find out who <clears throat> Jason is, and you find out what Freddy's plan is and everything. You literally have the entire movie set up of what's going to happen for the next... Yeah, you could... That's probably why it's boring. Yeah, like, for the first we hour. Know what, we know what they're doing. Yeah. Let's just get to the fight. It's a good setup, though, because I was thinking about it, and I wrote down, like... If you don't know who Freddy and Jason are, why are you watching this movie? It's yeah. not for you. Yeah. But I thought about it. And I said, you know, what? if you happen to wander upon it, you're, you're filled in within that first minute and a half. Yeah. You've seen these I, scenes of Freddy killing people from older movies, which I did appreciate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we get a backstory on Freddy. It's like our kind of our first where they confirm the uh, the children. Like, yeah, I guess like the whole his whole <clears throat> dealings with with them. I guess. Yeah, because like the only time I think you ever refer to a backstory is in six. Which we watched for the podcast. Yeah, re dead. refer to episode whatever from this show. From whenever. Yeah, <laughs> from whenever. But no, that, so that was kind of like interesting to get like a backstory on him. Yeah. Because I, th I think they did... Uh, no, yeah, I guess they only did it in um, Freddy's Dead. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And this is... Okay, this is weird because this takes place right after A New Nightmare, which A New Nightmare basically debunks all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Yeah, because the, no, it, it just doesn't count. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't it count. fake. Yeah, it literally ends with the script saying, like, thank you for playing Nancy one more time. That's literally the ending of the movie. Yeah. Where, I know, it's, it's not part of the franchise. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, yeah it's non-canon, basically. But I, I kind of feel like this isn't canon either. I do. I feel like it follows up. Really? Yeah. Man. I feel like it take, takes place right after all of them. I just feel like it's just some... Some fan fiction. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, even with, like, Jason, because <clears throat> Jason is buried, and Jason yeah. was buried at the end of Jason Goes to Hell. No, he was uh, brought to hell. He should be in hell he right was now. buried. He's buried. Yeah. His body. Uh, so, like, you see, like, his heart reform and everything, and he comes back, and he bursts to the ground. Yeah, but wasn't he in the water in this movie? No, he came out of the, the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
And then um, Freddy, I'm trying to think how Freddy... He's just been dead? It's just, yeah, Freddy just Well, it's just, the, it, it's the whole, like, idea, what... It's the whole thing where, like, Freddy's an idea, where yeah. all you have to do is think, and he comes back, and that's kind of, like, how he comes back every single movie, which is, I think is a cool explanation. Yeah, I know. I think it is, too. I like the whole, like, everyone forgot who he was, and that's why he disappeared. Yeah, and I was like, it's oh, it's like, kind of cool yeah. way to get rid of him. Yeah. And that was neat. And they, they explained in this movie that pretty much all the children have forgotten about Freddy, so, he, you know, he's not popping up anymore. He's not killing anybody. So what Freddy is going to do is he's going to resuscitate Jason, which I don't know how he does it. But he gets Jason to come back to life, which we we get we get the explanation uh, from uh, Jason's mom that you can never die. Like that's the whole explanation. Like you can never I can't die after eight movies. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me sooner? So is Jason? Let me ask you: this, Is Jason a ghost or is Jason a zombie? He's a zombie. A zombie yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because like they kind of treat him as a ghost sometimes with the teleportation. Yeah. And then they treat him as like a zombie sometimes. Well, yeah, with his decaying face and just yeah. constant killing. Yeah, yeah. Or him getting killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm I'm okay with the fact that they never explain, which it. makes no sense at the end of the movie. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, no, yeah, totally. <laughs> but you know, they they pretty much explain that Freddy is going to use Jason to evoke fear in the children again, basically almost to pin the murders as on if it Freddy. Were, yeah. So they're like, who is this? And it's like, oh, it's Freddy, and they keep spreading the word and so I guess then like they, the fear comes back for Freddy. Yeah, I guess they treat it like I mean they even bring it up they they treat the spreading the word like the name or the idea of Freddy as a virus wait pretty oh, much okay. yeah yeah because they treat it with like the hypnosis which is the medication they take yeah for, uh, okay for no that's good yeah um and I'll tell you what too at the beginning of this movie while Freddy is describing all this um he looks so cool his makeup he does yeah and it looks completely different than the rest of the movie he looks cool in this part and then he looks cool in the um the, I think the dream dream sequence oh no it's, yeah he's got like this like i, I wrote it down he's Sharp got like this like he has this like goblin look yeah, yeah and it's really the creepy. eyes really creepy the eyes yeah. uh look almost like whitish yeah looking, and then the teeth are like jagged and sharp yeah, but for the rest of the movie, he just looks like normal. Yeah, they should have yeah. just kept to it to keep like kind of update the look, yeah, kind of like what weird. they did for New Nightmare. For New Nightmare, yeah. Freddy looks awesome in New Nightmare. He looks yeah. cool. He looks all right in New Nightmare. Oh, really? I, I think, I, that's I, think the best. I, I do like like it's a clean clean cut look. But I uh, like the yellow eyes. Yeah. I, yeah. So they, I feel like they should have updated the almost like how they updated Jason for this movie because in all the movies it looks like he's wet, like a like a gross looking wet monster. This one he looks like a dried piece of poop. <laughs> I think yeah. that's what it said in the script. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not even Kane Hodder either. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that was kind of stupid. Which is weird. You can't do that. Yeah, it's like it's not having. It's like not having Robert England play Freddy. Exactly. It's not. It's like not having um, James Spader play Michael Myers. And there's no reason for it either. I don't know why they just didn't do Kane. Hodder. Why are you looking like that? James Spader. Yeah, he's not Michael Myers. I know. So <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the beginning of the movie opens up, and a girl goes skinny dipping. And she totally gets naked right off the bat. And she runs, goes skinny dipping, gets out, gets scared, starts running throughout the woods, and Jason shows up. And I don't know if you noticed this, but when she's, like, like running around the woods looking around, she's not looking at, like, directly in a front of her. Path of where yeah, she's, going. she's looking up in the trees to see if there's someone around her. It's a I really mean, bizarre... Because, you know, Jason likes to fly and jump on people. That's yeah, maybe she knew that. Yeah. yeah. But no, um, she ends up getting stabbed and then Jason's mother comes talks to Jason, but it's not really the mother. It's Freddie like persuading yeah, Jason he's, to he's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we cut to our main characters who are having a house party. Um, All right, now are these teenagers or college kids? I wrote that down. I said these, these are, are old uh, ass looking teenagers. These are some mid mid twenties to thirty year old uh, teenagers. Yeah. Well, the and thing is, I don't think they look old, but they just don't look like teenagers. Yeah. That's why I was like, why don't they just do a better job of hiring young people? I think. Mo well, the thing is, like, I think most of them, um, I was reading, they were like twenty two, twenty three at the time, so they're not like super old. Yeah. But that's like a seven, six, seven year difference yeah. of like. I think it would be more effective of a movie if they got like legit. Like teenagers, but yeah, but, very but I guess you can't do some of the things that you do. That's true, yeah, yeah. for sure. And me, it, I mean, I know me personally at sixteen or seventeen, if you watched me on screen, I was like an idiot because I don't know how to talk. I wouldn't yeah. know how to talk at that age. You yeah, know, walking all weird. Like, yeah, oh, am I walking all right? Playing harmonica in every yeah. scene. I don't know. But <laughs> uh, what do you got, man? No, I don't want to say it. Okay. Uh, stealing people's uh, candy money. Yeah, candy money. Uh, nutty buddy. Yeah, nutty buddy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we meet all these main characters, and they're at the house um, 
that Nancy lived in in Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that supposed to be our house? It said 1428 on it, which I think oh, is Nancy's okay. house. Um, and so we meet some of the main characters. We have Lori, who was a character. She uh, undeclared. Oh yeah, I forgot. She, I was gonna say oh, that, Dawson's yeah. Creek in Orange County. Who's she in Orange County? Uh, when they stop at the in Stanford, they go to that party, and he's like talking to the girl. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, then Butterfly comes on, and yeah, they yeah. start. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I remember her from Dawson's Creek. Um, she does a good job in this. I like her. Yeah, she's, she's a right. very yeah, pretty she girl did, as yeah. well. Um, she got very. She got that like. Um, that old beauty look to her, I think. What's no? old, like old, like Victorian era? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, give me well, the era. Said, you like, said old prehistoric? look. I'm trying to name some different eras. <laughs> we got uh, Kelly Rowland, who was my favorite of the Beyonce's oh, okay. children. Yeah, <laughs> Beyonce's children. <laughs> Beyonce's children. <laughs> um, I like Kelly Rowland. I think she does a good job. I do not this. like her in this movie. Really? really? Yeah. I like her. In this. I like her. Uh, she. Yeah. Uh, is annoying. She's an asshole, and then she says something very inappropriate to Freddy Krueger later on in the this movie. This is true. This is true. Um, and then we get the girl from Ginger Snaps. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah, um, I can't remember. Uh, uh, Catherine Isabel. That's right. Yeah. yeah good wow. Good memory, memory man. Um, Database. <laughs> so those are our three main characters for now, because as the movie goes on, we get more and more main characters. And some people that may like just show up randomly and stick with us throughout the movie. Maybe. We'll see yeah. what happens. Let me ask you, okay, in movies like this, why don't they decide to make the main character more interesting? Because, like, okay, all of the side characters are really interesting, but except for the main girl, who gets kind of like... Oh, no, they try to tell us in the first minute. They're, no, they're trying to make her interesting, because apparently she'll never love again. She lost her love. Her mother's dead. Like they tell us all this yeah, stuff like, in like a minute. I'm supposed to be like, okay, cool. I know her. It's kind of like how we got that recap of uh, both of the killer's backstories and what the plan is throughout the entire movie. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they just kind of wasted it all in five minutes, the first five minutes. Well, the, the well, way, we, But we always get this in horror movies, though, like especially yeah, slasher we, films. We, we know what get, they're like, all about. We it's, always get the boring characters, like the main character. Mm. You know what I mean? And all the characters that we really like are the side characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, I, so it's like, why don't they ever like flip it up on itself and say like, hey, let's make the uh, the more centric side characters the main characters. Yeah, why don't yeah. you make uh, remake Scream and make Randy the main character? Yeah, exactly. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, like why? Well, I guess he's it... kind of the main. I kind of, I think they kind of did that with Cabin in the Woods a little bit. A little bit. Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking of when I said that right there. And I was like, breaking well, they the did stereotype a little, little bit because the girl though in that is very like innocent. Yeah, it's always like basically like if you did the Scooby Doo, it's always the Velma. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like Velma's always the main character. Yeah, I agree uh -huh. with that. Yeah. Well, and I think the thing is, they always with these movies, they always tell us, they don't show us, they don't give us like the character does things. We go, oh, that person likes this. This is what they do. This is who they are. It's always like my mom died, and I'll never love I'm just, again. Yeah, I'm just love. a broken and, soul. And, and now I'm supposed to know who you are. I'm like, yeah. cool. I know exactly who this character yeah. is. But um, we do get an awesome scene of Catherine, Catherine Isabel, is that correct? I think that's right. Yeah. Of her flicking a cigarette at Jason, <laughs> Jason's mask. Perfect aim. Dude, it's hysterical. I don't know if it was supposed to be yeah, funny. Yeah, because he's just staring. Doesn't, you know, he doesn't react because he's a mindless monster. Dude, it cracks me up. And it's in slow-mo. Yeah. yeah. Can Which we talk I, about how much slow-mo is in this movie? There's that, and then there's like the jittery Peter Jackson effect with the choppy... Yeah, the uh, choppy slow-mo. Like, oh, is that... Okay, that's what you're talking it's about. It's bizarre. Yeah. I it's don't all, know. It's like every scene. I hate that, dude. What would they, be the reason for using it? Is it just like it's an chaotic, I guess. Okay. Well, and you're not really more like a metal music video. Hey, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of that music in this movie. Yeah. So, and I, I have listened to the soundtrack back in the Let day. Let me guess. You owned it? Um, you rented it? No. I think I, I got think, from the library. I don't think I've ever heard this soundtrack. It's like no Cottonmouth Kings, Kings, man. Huh? No Scream 2. No Scream. Wait, what song is off Scream 2? You know. What? Two, three, three, four. Suburban I life. I think I ain't love one you. So what am I so afraid of? <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> that less than Jake song. <laughs> um. So we meet some of the guy characters. They're all like, I don't. know. They don't really stick around. Oh yeah, they're just generic looking yeah. dudes. You meet uh, Catherine's uh, boyfriend, who's like, he's like, babes, like, get upstairs and give me a massage. And he's like, don't make me tell you twice. Yeah, like this guy. It's Will Arnett from Hot Rod. <laughs> That's exactly who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Babe. Babe. <laughs> so uh, they go upstairs and they go at it. And while she is taking a shower, he's laying on his stomach. And Jason comes in and shoves a knife right through him and the bed. And this is actually a pretty good effect. And he's just kind of like stabbing him. And then he takes the bed, which happens to be a, uh, 
collapsible bed. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, wasn't I sure think. I don't know. It. That's a good question. <laughs> I can't see. The, I can't really see like the the purpose of a bed that folds in half. Yeah. Good for transportation, I guess. It's for a hotel, like a hotel bed, basically. Hotel yeah. couch bed. Yeah. yeah. And he folds it in half so the guy's body bends Backwards, opposite the way yeah. it should. And Matt pointed out that he has an amazing scream right here. <laughs> yeah, so okay, yeah, it. if you find, go pull up the clip later on and just listen to his scream. It's very faint when you stay, hear it. Stay tuned for that clip in five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and this is another um, thing of slow motion kill that happens right here. And then um, she comes out of the bathroom and she kind of slips in blood and freaks out. Yeah. And then I realize we cut to like a, um, the police around everywhere. Oh, yeah. They all run out freaking out. Oh, yeah, yeah. They run yeah. out of the, the house just screaming. And a, car ha- or a cop car happens to be pulling down the street. Perfect timing. And then all these cops around, I realize this movie has a lot of scream vibes to it. Yeah. And I, this is what... Seven years after the first scream, so this is like the end of like that era. Yeah, the yeah. new line like that the teen or whatever dimension. Oh new yeah, line, yeah, like yeah. teen horror movie hype. Yeah, like MTV horror movies. Yeah, I was what I'll call it, MTV horror movies. The only thing we didn't <laughs> get for this poster is like the different characters in the background and the foreground of the poster. Yeah, that's the only thing we didn't get from this movie. Pretty nope. much. Yeah, that's, that's true. And but it's like the same. It's the same formula. There's just no poster though. Yeah. No. So we go back to the uh, the police station and we meet. Are um, kind of a side character. It's speaking a, of uh, Dead Man on Campus. Dead Man on Campus. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Lachlan Monroe, I think is his name. Yeah, and he has a, uh, a name in this movie, but I don't have it on hand. But uh, we meet him, who's kind of like the new guy in town, and everything to help Lori out. Uh, Lori falls asleep in the police station. Everybody's gone. And this is where she kind of first meets Freddy. How does it trigger? How does it trigger Freddy if he's not? I wrote that down on my notes. Matt, yes. Matt actually brought this up. We watched it together. Matt actually brought this up. This you catch this too, because, because Matt, she bar- he barely says the name Freddy, and she doesn't hear it. Well, I mean, only one person's dead, but it's not gonna. It's not gonna like insinuate that it's Freddy. No, because like, okay, one cop says like, "Oh, is it Freddy?" And she thinks she hears a name. She's like, "I don't know." Like, I heard somebody's if name. That's it. That's super. Dumb. And that's it. That's it. Because then she has like a dream about like Freddy Krueger. Or but like, if she has no, if she doesn't have any pre-existing idea of who Freddy is, which doesn't make any makes sense. No That's sense. what Matt's yeah. point was. Because mm-hmm. later on in the movie, like like five minutes later, the one of the guys that was at the party in the beginning, yeah, has a dream about Freddy attacking him in the street. Yeah, and that makes no sense because like he didn't know about Freddy either. That yeah. So it's like gotcha. how does, it doesn't yeah, and it's okay. actually a very good point. And actually, that's what happens in the next scene. Uh, this character Blake. He's sitting on his porch drinking from his flask. Um, that's his character trait. He uh, drinks from a flask. Does he do it in the party or something? Yeah, he does it a couple times. Like okay. that's like, who am I? I'm like, oh, you're flask guy. Yeah. And he's sitting on the porch, and his dad comes out to talk to him, and he kind of goes off on his dad. So weird. And then all of a sudden, Blake goes out into the street, and this is when he gets attacked by like I call it the uh, the mummy Freddy, the silly CGI <laughs> the Freddy. <mummy> Freddy. <laughs> Well, it looks like the mummy, like the way he's like tearing through like the street. Yeah. And it doesn't look too bad. God, I hate Freddy's. <laughs> it's Brendan Fraser. I, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Freddy tries to stab uh, Blake, but he's not strong enough. And of course, Freddy, or Freddy, um, Robert England does this throughout this whole movie, and it's not on him. It's the script. But he explains everything that's happening. Yeah. He's like, I'm not strong enough. He's yeah. like, I have to get stronger. And like, Oh, no. And his big thing is he likes to welcome everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Matt pointed this every out. Every time they show him, he's like, welcome to my nightmare. He's like, <laughs> maybe that's why they. Uh, maybe that's how they made fun of that in uh, Eastbound Down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm your new nightmare. I'm your new nightmare. No, yeah. he welcomes everybody in this movie. He's yeah, just, he's a yeah. very nice guy. Very, yeah, generous. very, very polite for... Very mm, polite. Yeah, you know, someone that's about to kill you. <laughs> But uh, I hate I hate the line from this kid Blake. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, the that ADR is, line. Is it? No. Oh, it's actually, there's it's, actually no. There are actually a couple of ADR lines where somebody's walking away. Yeah. They're far away from the camera, and you just tell it's like ADR. Yeah, because they're probably like, oh, we can't tell if he got killed or not. So throw this yeah. ADR line, and it yeah. says, him or it's saying, just I'm like, okay. I'm okay, just to help progress the, the fact that uh, he doesn't have enough power to yeah. kill these teens yet. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, he tries to uh, stab him. And he doesn't, he is not successful with it. And Blake goes to get back up on the porch. And that's when he kind of just turns over and he kind of wakes up and he sees his dad sitting there. He's like, dad, he's like, what's going on? And his dad's head falls off and he catches it. Turns around, Jason's right there. And as Jason goes to slash him, he kind of, I noticed the Blake kind of uses his dad's head. To <laughs> really? <laughs> he, <laughs> he uses his dad's head to shield him. 
And I mean, I guess it makes sense. But like, he's the first thing you see to block a like a, a sharp weapon. You know, does he get yeah. killed in the scene? Yeah, yeah, because you see how that blood hit the, okay. the window and everything. I always thought that he doesn't get killed. That if the, they. It was the blood from the head? It was the blood from the head, and he got away, and that was, like, supposed to be Oh, dude, that'd be it. Like, awesome. That's what he... I thought, and I was like, okay, okay. I'm waiting for him to come back. Is like, this the nope. part where uh, Freddy's, like, he starts yelling no, or... Oh, no, that's later on. I know what you're okay, talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. No, this is when we meet, um... We Will meet and Will and Mark. Martin, yeah. Oh, uh, Mark. Is yeah. it Mark or Martin? Mark. Okay. Mark. Um, we got cut to an institution. You uh, know what this is, right? What this is supposed to be. Is it the same one from 3? Yeah. I think it's supposed to be where, uh... Freddy was technically born, which makes no sense in this movie. What? Because you, you know, sure? how, you know how Freddy Freddy was. It's because this place is called Weston Hills. And apparently, that's the same asylum where Freddy was was born. Okay. From Son of a Thousand Maniacs. Remember that? Line? Yeah, but I think they show oh. that. But that, I think that place is abandoned. I know it doesn't make sense. They use the name though. It's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be okay. a place. All right. But no, these two characters. Uh, Will is Laurie's ex, who she talks about in the beginning. And Mark is like his best buddy. And we cut to them like in line to take their medication, which we find out is it's hypnocell. hypnocell, which is actually brought up in previous Freddy movies. Is it? Yeah, I just can't remember which one. I think it is. The only thing I could think about is three because they're in the asylum. Hi- I- I- I'm telling you, Hypnocell was brought up. In... I'm almost positive it is too. Okay, I just but can't I just remember can't, which one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Mark and uh, Will, they both have to take it. And Will gets upset because he sees Lori on the TV and he sees that there was a murder and everything. So Will's trying to find some way to get out of there. And uh, Mark helps him out by... Um, and he ends up stealing the keys from like the head guard. Or the head um, yeah, the guy he starts, who runs the institution or whatever. Yeah, he pulls his pants down and starts hopping around the... Yeah, he pulls his pants down, farts on a window... <laughs> <laughs> and he steals the keys. I'm pretty sure they were editing this movie like, you know, it'd be funny for the scene, right? A fart. Let's do it. ADR. ADR yeah. fart. In Guys, there. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit of trivia about the scene. The Foley artist farted in the microphone for the special effect. I'm going to tell you a little fun fact about the scene. Okay. I laughed at it. Oh, cool. Oh, real, real, real Another fun. IMDb fact. Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Mark and Will, they end up getting out of the institution. And then we cut to the next day and they're at school. And they're all at school. They have all decided to go to school after yeah. all these deaths. Including the Mark and who else? Oh, Mark yeah. and Will don't go to school there. They just show up. They just show up and it's just like... But they're supposed to be in school because they're, they're supposed, supposed to be, to be the same age. inconspicuous about showing up to like, hey, hey, you guys are supposed to be somewhere. I don't know where though. Yeah. And then like they show up and make a big scene. And you don't show up to a public place where you're not the student and there's all those people that... And you have a history of uh, going crazy apparently? Or... Pretty much. Yeah, and we um, actually we meet a couple characters because we meet um, what ends up being Kelly Rowland's love interest. Is what? it? <laughs> I, you don't think so? I would no. say Kelly Rowland ends up being his love interest. Yeah, Kelly Rowland. Hold on, Kelly like, Rowland. He likes up... her, but she doesn't share the same. Oh no, I think it's I think it's both. I think it goes both ways. Well, towards the end, it does. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, right now they both feelings, hate each other. Those feelings don't exist. Yeah, but they will. <laughs> so they're not really love interests. Let the characters at, at the moment. Let the characters tell the story. Let the character development do its work. Johnny drama. Characters welcome. <laughs> And then we meet our. Uh, oh, by the way, the guy's name is Linderman. Linderman, yeah, I and he's that, from yeah. uh, Girl Next Door. Girl Next Door yep. and Just Friends. He's actually in a lot of good movies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's in two good movies, one bad movie. What's the bad one? Oh, you know. No. No. And then we also meet our um, Jason Muse character. Yeah. Oh, I know. Um, what's his name in this movie? Did he Freeberg? Freeberg. Freeberg. Okay. Which Freeberg. I think is. Supposed to be Freebird. Okay. They couldn't secure the rights to the name, though. But don't we also meet our Jack Black character in this, in this scene as well? No, that's not the right. Oh, that's Jack Black on. is a... Uh... That's Cornfield. No, he's late, he's in the Cornfield later on, but I think he's... It's like... a rave, not a Halloween costume contest. Do yeah. <laughs> you remember that like huge fad at the beginning of the 2000s where they're like, we got to have a character like Jack Black? So they found like anybody that was like overweight with dark hair. Yeah. Wait, what? And... Give me some of these movies, dude. Airborne. School of Rock. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> Jack of the Giant Beanstalk. No, these were... <laughs> no what movie is... Oh, Gulliver's, to get... Sorry, Gulliver's Travels. Why not this? Okay, there, there was this guy right yeah, here. Yeah, I'll give you this. This is one. Um, uh, Tomcats. Tomcats. <laughs> no, these are horrible. <laughs> Stop bringing up Tomcats on every it's podcast. True. 
That's no, true. I can't think of any right off the top of my head. I really no. Can't. That was a great point. We can't think of anything. Yeah, conveniently, I can't back up the thesis statement I just made. <laughs> okay, your whole thesis statement of remember in the early two thousands when every movie had a Jack Black character. Yeah, yeah, like, no, no, yeah, you're supposed to. Yeah, no, actually, I will give you that. Um, oh, well, then fuck not, you, dude. No, I'm gonna give you. <laughs> <laughs> you just no, the it just all we did were just Jack Black movies. I was gonna help you. Uh, high fidelity. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Another Jack Black movie. Oh yeah, my bad. He was actually Jack Black. Uh, Enemy of the State. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. oh wait, that was Jack Black. Yeah. 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 Called God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the Jackal. <laughs> Remember that one? Yeah, I got his arm blown off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we meet a couple of the new characters. We got um, Freeberg. We got Linderman, and uh, Mark and Will show up, and Mark kind of has his like reconnection with Lori, who's really like touched by this. Um, cops show up. To get Mark and Will. When but is this like, after she passes out, though? or? Oh, yeah, yeah. She ends up passing out right here and ends up going to the nurse's office. Yeah, she yeah. doesn't see Mark until the party, the maze, the, ma- the maze party. Wait, yeah, no, I they, no, I no. they saw each other for a second. And then... That's why she passes out. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Because he's like, he's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, babe. And he's like, I love school. I love, I love school. school. Uh, yeah, I love school. Yeah, no, that's the exact dialogue uh, word for it's word. It's two in the morning here at the Cinema Cold <laughs> Man, I hope not. If you can think of any movies that are like Jack Black characters. <laughs> no, wait, actually, this is kind These of a great orange on our Facebook page. <laughs> 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 to prove that you're not a robot. <laughs> no, actually, this is a cool scene because while they're in the hallway at school, Mark shows up um, just before Lori passes out, and he pretty much helps Lori describe ready to this entire hallway full of kids so they all remember so now it like spreads the fear who else are we introduced to in this scene i think the principal i think you the got, principal shows up you got freebird <laughs> you got linderman you got mark <laughs> you got will so there's that one guy too he was in the background we got introduced yeah, to um, actually um glow stick billy idol might be here too cameo <laughs> he pops up later cameo i think it's in this scene chris from cinema cult and not angelina eva uh, Angie Everhart from Bordello of Blood. No, um, the girl from Lost and last name oh. last name Lily. She's not Angelina. Really? She is. Yeah, You're a liar. It's, it's, I've heard this before. She's in the background. I've seen yeah. a very funny clip of her. You in the background. You watched this last night. Why don't you point this out? Because uh, I read it earlier. I didn't see her. I just read it. I've I've heard this before though. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I Thanks for confirming. I think it's a tall tale. Off of the internet. Okay, so Lori passes out. <laughs> Lori passes out and goes to the nurse's office. And then we learned, um, we learn Kelly Rowland's. She really uh, wants to get a nose job. That's her character. That's her character. She wants a nose job. She's supposed to be fake. And, uh, she falls asleep and, uh, Freddie takes her nose off. He's like, got your nose. Do you guys notice the article? No. Fingerella. Is it really? Get it? No, I got it. That's funny. Dude, okay, you. <laughs> I know this is. <laughs> yeah, it's a figurella. Really? And he said, "Got your nose." Oh, good one, Freddie. Got him. You're, what, you're, quite the zinger. You breaking so many grounds there. Quite in the, the movie. zinger from the child. Uh, <laughs> but okay, killer. <laughs> you can't Same make guy. fun of it because you've watched eight of these movies now. Maybe. What's it to you? You know the humor is supposed to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like. So I mean, he's actually it's weird because it does. All right. Well, he's like in in the movies, he actually says the humor, which I'm fine with the got your nose, but it's like the stuff that you don't really catch, and you have to like, oh my god, you have to rewind it. And yeah, like you know, I gotta see what they say. Well, I, I feel like his humor doesn't fit in this movie. No, like it doesn't match up to the tone of this movie at all. Because like and he uses it very sparingly. No, it's just weird because you open up on Freddy Krueger, and he's the most terrifying motherfucker you see in this movie, and yeah. then he's slinging around jokes. Midway, through, you know, five minutes later, it's yeah. like that's not the same person. At yeah, all. They, yeah, it's just weird. It's like they, they yeah, can't, can't figure out if they want to make him scary or they want to make him do, fun. You can't do like the 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 Nightmare One Freddy, and then mix him in with like the Nightmare Six Freddy. Yeah, you gotta do one iteration or the other. Like, yeah, it's either good. Well, I don't know. I, I I think it works in this. I think it works with the goofy, and then when he's serious, he's well, serious. he doesn't do any of the serious stuff in any of the other movies. You know, it's it's always just like always super like. Uh, comical. I don't or know. It's super serious. Two is pretty serious. Yeah, okay. I see well, so, yeah. Oh, okay. So two is like, for the most part, it's pretty That's a dark serious. Movie, yeah. yeah. Three kind of goes off the rails. It's like, welcome to prime time, bitch. Yeah. And then like three or uh, four, five, and six, it's kind of like more joking. Yeah. And then New Nightmare is like legit. Oh, Straight. shit. He's back, yeah. back to the first one. You can't do like, I, I just, it doesn't work for me. Okay. So. I, it's my favorite movie of all time. Which one? This. Oh, 
Oh. But following up this, we get probably my favorite scene in the entire movie, which is the is cornfield it, scene. Is it pretty iconic? I think it's an amazing scene because you get so much going on here. You have Spider from Power Man 5000. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's close to Billy Idol. I don't know, dude. Oh, uh, I, just, I just called him Brock Turner. Who's Brock Turner? Oh, he's been in the news very recently. Brock, Brock Turner classic movies? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, we get this awesome cornfield scene. Linderman goes off on Kelly Rowland, kind of stands his ground. Will shows up. The girl from Ginger Snaps. Why can't I not think of her name? Catherine Isabel. Catherine Isabel. I yeah, I'm yeah, almost memorized. positive that's her name. So Catherine uh, walks into the cornfield, and she's kind of drunk. And she sees her dead boyfriend, Trey, yelling at her. He's like, come on, babe. He's like, let's go. And she's like, all right. <laughs> so she follows him to the cornfield, and she ends up at... Um, the boiler room. The boiler room, pretty much. The whole building is this huge boiler room. Um, and this is kind of a throwback to like the classic Freddy movies in the boiler room. I don't know if you've seen them in the last couple movies that they actually had with Freddy. Wait, what's that? Like the boiler room stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's more like early Freddy, I think. Yeah. They do it... Um, All the way up to Freddy's Dead. They do it in Freddy's Dead, for they? sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they actually do it in um, New Nightmare, but it's like a, a castle boiler room. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's something like... But it's like a... Yeah, it doesn't... I don't think it... It doesn't work with... I mean, it doesn't like, match with the other ones. No, Freddy's Dead, he does it with the ear. Yeah, he does it. it. Yeah, for sure. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, what am I talking about? Yeah. Okay, ignore everything I just said. So, yeah, I think he does... Yeah, he actually does it in every single yeah. one. And while she's in this boiler room, I one thing this movie does really well that I really like is the contrast of red and blue. Yeah. And they yeah. use that a lot. Even they throw green in there later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but the boiler room is completely red while she's walking around. And so she's getting hunted by Freddy. And while all this is going on, there's a, our, your glow stick Billy Idol boy. It's kind of like... It's Brock Turner, dude. Is, is it really Brock Turner? Yeah, from the news recently. Okay. Who's Brock Turner? Brock Turner basically uh, raped a a sleeping college student. Oh, shit. Yeah. W- went on trial and then got away scot-free. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's why he, because he has like the blonde hair and everything. Are you thinking like Brock Turner is the name of the newscaster from The Simpsons? It does not. Oh, Brock. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But yeah, it's basically, I was bringing some like current events. Dude, that's awesome. Leave it in. (laughs) For more of our intelligent viewers. (laughs) You mean the guy from The Simpsons? That makes no sense. So yeah, he kind of starts kind of feeling her up while she's passed out. And um, while that's going on, we even have more happening in the main cornfield. We got Jason who shows up. Well, yeah, I think it just opens up to uh, we well, get when he <clears throat> when Freddie like finds her in the locker. Well, yeah, because Freddie's hunter down and Freddie she hides in a locker, and Freddie busts open the locker, and when he goes to stab her, all of a sudden a blade pops to her chest because Jason is actually killing her in real life. Yeah, along with uh, Brock Spider. Turner. Yeah, and um, he gets upset by it. And he does this whole, like, no, she was mine. See, what I have to do is I have to kill a lot of people. So, and he just, That's he ex- exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, and he explains it again, and it's like, okay, we, I, we know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, you said on. it in the, the beginning of the movie, remember? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's exactly what's going on. And so now we have Jason. He sounds really lonely, doesn't he? What's that? Freddy just sounds really lonely in this movie. Like, he just kind of just talks. I need more himself. souls so I can have friends down here. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta wake up in the morning. I gotta, take, I gotta get my coffee because if I don't get my coffee, I get cranky at work. That's true, dude. Yeah. yeah like coffee just, makes everything better. But he's not talking to anybody. He's just talking to himself in the car on the way to get coffee. He's like, if I don't get the coffee, otherwise it's like a Bill Cosby, Freddy Krueger. If I don't get the coffee, <laughs> I get upset. Then I gotta I get, get the jello. Then I get the crankiness. Pops. And then he gets quiet and he's like, I'm so lonely. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Why aren't people are, like being around me? And then he gets like in this whole like. <laughs> no, no, we got to the cornfield. We get our uh, our Jack Black. He uh, ends up setting Jason on fire with a pitcher of beer and well, a he torch. Because uh, he's just kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's just kind of hulking over them as they're like drinking. I think. What are they drinking? Everclear or something? Or? Is that yeah. what it was? It's Everclear. Yeah. They make yeah. a very clear comment that it's Everclear. Well, I thought it was actually initially because I. Uh, didn't get a uh, glimpse of the Everclear. I thought it was just beer. So I was like, they, wow, the director really thinks beer is just I did too. <laughs> Up until this day, I did too. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. But yeah, they see Jason just hulking over. And he says, hey, Jethro, this is a rave, not a Halloween party. And then, uh, what is he? snaps the friend's neck. And Very, yeah. This is actually like a legit reaction I would have if my friend was killed. 
What? What'd you say? <laughs> Take ever clear and then light him up. No, 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 no. His reaction is just like, what? Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, he's like so taken aback by like he's like very confused on like what just happened because that's, that's like a, something that you never see yeah. happen. Yeah, and then yeah, and that's why he's like, oh fuck. That's kind dude. of a cool reaction. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that's why his first reaction is like awesome when he like blows the Everclear and like lights him on fire. And dude, it happens so quick the way he throws the Everclear on him, and then he grabs a torch and sets him on fire. It happens within like I would have like had the torch and just blew like the Everclear into the flame like a flamethrower, <laughs> yeah, but then it would like awesome. dribbled down your chin and then, and then you're on fire. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Quick, kill me, please. Quick. <laughs> I don't want to burn it down. Please. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. <laughs> Check out this fucking guy. Well, hey, Jethro. This is a rave, not a Halloween party. Why don't you go find yourself a pig to fuck? <laughs> yeah. Invite only corn poke and you weren't invited. Son of a bitch. And then, uh, so Jason chases him through the cornfield and we get the scene where Jason launches Miss Machete into the guy's chest and he stops and he like spits blood up in was slow this a, motion. Uh, was this a 3D movie? Nope. No, it could have been. This is a total 3D gimmick right here. Yeah. Between that and the Catherine, Catherine Isabel death. Oh, for when it's busted like, there? Yeah. Oh the yeah, blood, I can kind of like see blood, that. Like, yeah. Yeah, and then Jason goes on his whole like spree and he's actually got some pretty brutal kills. I like the way this is actually set up. The way he's just kind of like slashing and like people's chests are just like ripping open. I like this scene a lot. Do you? Okay. Because this is actually, I think back when we did episode two and Jason takes Manhattan, uh, I think this is what we brought up that he should have been doing in New York. It's just like going down the street, just killing like every, yeah. everybody, just like steamrolling through everybody. Yeah. And he actually does it in this movie, which is actually kind of cool. He's just like tearing apart everybody and then everybody just goes home. Like yeah, those that's, who are alive. That's, the, oh, that's the funniest part. Yeah, is that everybody just leaves and just nobody wanna... tells the cops, and the cops don't have any investigation about the stuff. Man, that dude in the hockey mask or the the, the hockey player was super pissed for some reason. Yeah, I'm just tired. I want to go home and sleep. Yeah, and they all just go in their separate ways. Like you just watch like a mask. You watch place. a lot of your classmates from high school <clears throat> pass away. Yeah. yeah, your best friend's chest exploded. People, yeah, and they totally I... just left her in yeah. the yeah. cornfield. They don't know what happened to her for the rest of this movie at all. No, they just like ran like right over there. Like, oh, she's dead. No way. Dude, sometimes, I don't think they ran past her at all. Sometimes she's deep in, she's like deep in the cornfields. Is so, she? Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, yeah. Yeah, she's gone. Sometimes it is hard doing this podcast because I look at a movie and I'm like, Freddy vs. Jason, great movie, man. No problems with it. And then we just, we like dissect movies. And, and, then, I'm like, I, and then I arrive. And then, <laughs> and then I meet you. <laughs> But yeah, they get in the van, they leave, they discuss nothing really that happened. They go their separate ways. And um, Will tries to convince Lori that her dad is actually the one who killed the mom. And that night later on, Lori escapes with Will and they go to Mark's place. And when they get there, Mark is falling asleep and he wakes up. Why did they rush over there? Like, uh, did they know he was falling asleep or something? Or I think they were just trying to get out of town or just oh, get everything just going. I, I, I think, I don't know. But no, um, while Mark's sleeping, he sees his brother dead in the bathtub. Scott Farkas. From uh, Titus. From, uh... Yeah, that's what I know. It's from, from Titus. Titus. From A Christmas Story. Oh, yeah. That's right. Duh. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's also in Christmas Story. Yeah. And he starts talking like Freddy, and he explains his whole <clears throat> thing again. Yeah, because we haven't heard that before. Because we don't know what's going on yeah. in this movie. Thank you. And, um, he actually ends up getting set on fire... Well, no, first he gets his face slashed, doesn't he? Yeah, he's just being thrown around the room. And actually, his face getting slashed looks pretty brutal. I thought yeah. it was a very yeah. good effect. Cool. And uh, then he gets set on fire. And then in a uh, nice little... Um, he uses his custom iron branding. I was to... going to say it's uh, his, his Fight Club. Oh, okay. It looks like Fight Club on his back. Oh, yeah. But it says... Um, um, Freddy's back. Freddy's, Freddy's back. It's Mark's back. It's Freddy's back. No, it's, it's Freddy's back. I know, but he wrote it on Mark's back. Yeah, he's claiming that back. He's like, this is my back. This is Freddy's back. <laughs> <laughs> so they all kind of gather up in one of their basements, discuss what everything's going on, how to stop them. And this is when um, the deputy shows up. His name is Stubbs, the guy from Dead Man on Campus. And uh, they're like, all right, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get out of it? Blah, I know blah, blah. how. Oh, go ahead. Okay. okay, how did they figure out that Jason and Freddy are linked? They figure it out somehow in the scene. Well, especially Lori. She yeah. says, uh, well, Jason died uh, or is from water and Freddy is from fire. How are we going to use that against them? Yeah, it's really weird. I was like, how did you make that connection? Like, 
I feel like Freddy should be like I think well, that's a back burner a, thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's a myth. He's a story. They shouldn't know anything about him. Yeah, and then but like Jason's the one. It's like okay, no, we saw Jason. Yeah, like, we have physical evidence. Of I just took a nap last yeah. night and had a dream about Freddy. Yeah, and it's like they're making him look it's just as big. Yeah. Well, you know the weird part about it is is when she realizes this, she's actually in. She's dreaming. So Freddy's oh, already there. Okay. So did Freddy give her the idea about the? Yeah. It's Which, bizarre. Yeah, it's kind of kind of silly to me. But you don't you don't know she's dreaming at first because everybody's still talking. Mm-hmm. And then they turn on her and she freaks out. And when she wakes up, she actually pulls Freddy's ear out from the dream, Ew. realizing that you can actually pull things out into the real world. And then they Just like by touching him, right? I think That's, so, yeah. So if she had her hands like a desk, she'd like wake up and there'd be like a desk there. Oh, dude, like, free oh. shit everywhere. That'd be <laughs> dude, awesome. I need a new TV. I'm going to go to this free dream stuff. real quick. Like yeah. a free cheeseburger? And yeah. You just take a nap. You're like, all right. And Freddy Krueger's like, oh my God, my cheeseburger. I haven't had cheeseburgers <laughs> in so long. Like, these teens keep My TV, them. I just got that Black Friday. <laughs> okay, so I have to bring this up too. What do you got? Okay, usually Friday 13th movies take place in one day. Yeah. They usually take yeah, place. Basically like Sunset day. to sunrise, yeah. right? Yeah. This movie takes place around like two or three days. Yeah. What the hell is Jason doing during the day? Uh, dude, he disappears. Walking? And then, is he, yeah, but he's just walking he doesn't, around he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't run. He doesn't run until the new remake or the remake. Yeah, but what is he doing though? Because usually like he's at Crystal Lake and then he like rises that, like that around the evening, right? Yeah. But like, what is he just, is he just walking he around? He does, I mean, Elm he does, he's, he's active during the day though. He's killed people during the day before. When? In Tell me. Early Friday movies. Like what? The paintball. That's true. He okay. kills a bunch of paintballers. But like, yeah. like, what is he doing here? He's probably sleeping. Maybe he's like a vampire schedule. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. There he's you just go. kind of just walking around Elm Street for three days. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, but he also has teleporting ability. So maybe he's sleeping and he's like, I now can teleport here. And, you know, it takes a little bit of strength yeah. or whatever. And he's probably just teleporting. He's like, find a local like holiday inn. Yeah. Dude, actually, the best <laughs> part about this scene, and Matt pointed this out, is they read an article on Hypnosil, the drug that uh, everybody's on. Yeah. And they just read the headline of the article, but the way they read it, I can't describe it because he reads it out loud like they're reading oh. the entire article, and it's just the headline. But they stretch it out into like, am I explaining this right? Yeah, it says like Hypnosil in big bold, and then like right underneath it in parentheses it says for sleep. Sleep uh, suppression or yeah. something like that. Oh, and okay. then they like they show them they're reading the article and they're trying to figure out what drug's called and what it does. It's like, and it like, says it right there. They're like, they're like yeah, and like there's a reading like, it says uh, this drug's called Hypnosil and I guess it's used for, I don't know, dream suppression? And it's all right there in the headline. That's yeah, the first, thing, the first you thing, thing you see. Guys, instance. I think it's time for a clip. God, y'all two killers, we're not safe awake or asleep. It's not the sleep that's killing us, it's our dreams. At Weston, Mark and I never had dreams. Were you on any drugs? Yeah, but there's something called Hypnosil. They never told us what it was for, but everyone there was taking it. Hypnosil. Experimental drug. Not even approved yet by the FDA. Oh, shit. Used for... suppression of dreams. We need those pills. Enough for all of us. Can you get us back to Western Hills? So they all decide to go to, I guess it's the hospital or like, yeah. or that's where they're testing all the patients and everything that it's, are, it's the, it's the Westing Hills is where they like Mark and Will. Oh, uh, okay. That's what, yeah. okay. And so they go there and all these people are in a coma. A lot of happens actually in the scene. We got people in comas. We got Freeberg gets high and he sees a Freddy Krueger dog. No, and, he sees basically the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Which, I guess I never made that reference, but some of, the shitty, that, like, some of the shittiest CGI. And it's weird because this yeah. whole movie, like graphic it's wise, it's all CGI, dude. But no, this movie looks pretty good graphic wise. Yeah, effects. It looks, it looks fine, like 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 cinematically, I guess. Yeah. This is the only scene where it happens. You're kind of like. Eh. Also, that in the um coming up here where the security guard gets killed. There's like a pile of CGI blood underneath the door i didn't notice really oh i didn't notice that. oh really yeah. it looked pretty fake to me yeah but no yeah. but yeah so freeberg gets high and <laughs> uh, but i was also asleep yeah <laughs> oh oh man twist that thing <laughs> basically freddy goes inside freeberg's body and gets rid of all the pills that they all came there to get to do the, the suppress dream suppression yeah as noted in the uh, headlines of the newspaper and all the many ex- explanations that they 
throw throughout this entire movie. Oh yeah. Jason ends up showing up and he kills um our cop guy by electrocuting him. Which and I feel like he's just kind of like a wasted character. At this point, yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of came off like he was gonna be a part of it. And yeah. then he dies over here and like, oh, okay. Cool. See ya. And then you get a couple great screams from Linderman. Yeah. <laughs> Who uh, is shooting at Jason while he's yeah. freaking out? Dude, no! Dude! Ah! 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 Get out of here! Go! And basically, what happens right here, and this is actually a really cool scene. Jason is walking down the hallway, and Freeberg is standing there, and he's got two um, needles behind his back that contain like the hypnosil drugs. I'm yeah. assuming. Um, they were. It's not hypnosis. It was something else. But yeah, basically, it's gonna it's put like Jason, a tranquilizer. Yeah, 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 it's gonna put Jason to sleep. And Jason's walking down the hallway. Imobatine. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay, nice. And Freeberg takes the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The needles, syringes, the pl- syringes. Thank you. The plungers, plungers. Yeah, the toilet. <laughs> he he takes the toilet plungers and puts them in his face. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mike Winslow and, uh, over here. Some great <laughs> um, and he jabs him in the Jason. And as they're going in, Jason just completely cuts him in half. That's pretty cool. This looks really good. Yeah. I'm actually really impressed. I'm surprised how much of this would have been CGI nowadays. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. <clears throat> it depends. It, it always depends on who's making the movie and who's a studio and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I think it, like an independent would probably make it legit. And then a big studio would make it fake as shit. Yeah, but then again, you get like stuff like Walking Dead that still uses. But they're able to graphic violence. They use graphic violence, but they are able to mask it with some CGI. Yeah, for the most part, it's actually real. But like, say some blood splatter will be fake. You know, it's like CGI. So like the CGI and like as much as like the show is just mediocre to me. The the special effects are amazing. Oh yeah, I agree. Oh and, yeah, Nick Terra does them. Yeah, and it's great that they're able to mask. Uh, Use very minimal CGI to like create some blood effects, or whatever. Yeah, and they get some really cool zombie concepts on there. Yeah, I think. for sure. In this next scene, we get our first real like Jason versus Freddy fight because it's AKA round one, pretty much. Yeah. Jason is asleep in the back of the van. He's all chained up. Don't and... know what to do. So we got Freddy and Jason are fighting, and it's an all red atmosphere. We get a bunch of random things like Freddy gets his arms cut off. They fight. We get like this whole um. Pinball. Basically, we find out that, like, through this fighting is that it's... Like, pointless? Yeah, it's pointless because Freddy can't be killed. Yeah, he's in the dream world. He's, he's the it's master. It's his world, yeah. yeah. I think once you realize you watch this fight, you're like, oh, well, neither one of them can die. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why it's stupid where I think, um, especially towards the end, we'll get to it, but, like, when uh, they're fighting at the construction site, Freddy's yelling out, why won't you die? It's yeah. like he's a fucking walking zombie, dude. It's like the yeah. same reason you won't die, dude. Yeah, it's like, the same, same uh, core concept. You guys got the, <laughs> you guys got the same, like... Apply the rules in your dream world to the real world, and that's exactly the same thing. <laughs> so they're fighting, and one of the water pipes starts to leak, and everything turns green, which looks really cool. And we find out that Jason is afraid of water, which is a new concept that... No. Kind of like it though. It's wait, it works, but they haven't used it in the previous with the ten water movies. The whole water, yeah. because he's casually just walking underwater all the time. Uh-huh. Like especially in uh, a little movie that we did early on in the show called <laughs> Jason Takes Time Traveler's Wife. Yeah, where he's like there interacting with Eric Bana, and it's just weird. Yeah. Like, I wish like, they would have brought drinking this up, water though. in the scene, dude. It's weird. <laughs> it's so, so weird. weird. I wish they would have brought this up in earlier films. So I kind of like this. Like, no, yeah, it's yeah, cool. It gives yeah. Them, I feel like monsters are uh, always better defined by their weaknesses, you know? Like, yeah. get the silver bullet at the stake, yeah. all that. Like, Frankenstein, the monster in the fire, kind of like that whole deal. Yeah, yeah. and it yeah. makes sense. But they Freddy... don't really have, they've never established a weakness between the two. And no. it makes sense, because Freddy would With be Freddy afraid of fire. Yeah, he would be, Jason would be afraid. Su- super soakers, like in Bordello Blood, bad news for Jason, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw <laughs> Keychain Super Soaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, this freaks Jason out, and he turns to a little kid. And I Freddy, like this more, actually, you do? and <laughs> do you? Oh, you do? Oh, you cool. do? Oh, cool. cool. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Freddy puts his claw into Jason's um, in the side of his head to kind of like read his mind, I guess. And then we get stuff that we've already seen before. You know, Jason was ignored. I actually like the visuals of this uh, part where Jason's walking to that cabin. Oh yeah, I think this is cool. It's almost like a matte painting, almost like a U painting. Oh yeah, <laughs> just like the dream, like the way the dream, like uh, is designed, I guess. Yeah, with like the weird kind of visuals of the cabin, and then like opens the door, and it's kind of like a 
weird chick. No, I know what you mean. But uh, yeah, I wish they do it more in this. But it's just really just boiler room. Oh, for the, the most in part, in the real yeah. world. Yeah, that's it. Well, and it cuts back and forth to this. Jason's still in the back of the van, and he's starting to drown in real life. So they convince Kelly Rowland to give him CPR. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's funny. She was centimeters close to, to doing it. To, I know. And I remember seeing this in the theaters. I remember actually people laughing at this scene. Oh, it's yeah, so ridiculous. You can tell she even, how, how she doesn't want to do it. Yeah, and it actually has a good effect because she starts to pull the mask back. Yeah. And he starts spitting up water. And her reaction to it is like genuine, too. Shit. Like she's actually reacting to it. So now we're like cutting back and forth between Jason and the van and then Freddy in the uh, the dream sequence. What ends up happening is Jason comes to life, and as he comes to life, they wreck the van, and he goes flying out of it, which is pretty comical, I think. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lori goes under so she can pull Freddy into the real world, and they end up going to a cabin. Oh, man, I forgot to actually talk about the best shot of the entire film. It is Freddie jumping out of the water in yeah. slow mo. Oh That's yeah, cool and the, shit. In her nightmare yeah. sequence. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely love that shot. And this is, but it's also this is where we get that like really cool look. This is where uh, he Freddy. looks really cool. This is like our demon. That's what Freddy. I'm saying, like the um, yeah, the goblin look. Yeah, yeah. I wish, we, yeah, I wish they would do it. Like, I don't know what stick, the hell stick to it or something. What the hell the thinking was with this was like, hey, this just make him scary in this part, but not the rest. of the Or movie. why not? Yeah, I guess they they could do it every time in the dream world where he's like a terrifying entity, and then. And they bring him out in the real world. He's just like a burned dude, you know. Yeah, they could have done like done done like that throughout the entire series, but I guess they just kept the look or whatever. Yeah, they just stuck to the simple look, the simple like simple burned. But, I mean, it still Freddy. works. But yeah, so then Lori goes under and she ends up kind of like fighting with Freddy, and we find out that Freddy was actually the one who killed Lori's mom, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, who, who cares, you know? Yeah. They end up arriving at the cabin, and Lori ends up pulling Freddy out from the world, or from the dream world. And this is when we get the metal music kicking in, that ba da ba 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 da Yeah. And Freddy's like, what? But then we also, uh, before that, we also get uh, the first part of Kelly Rowland flying several thousand feet backwards after she gets hit by Jason. Right here? Yeah. We get one here, and then we get one. Oh, I know there was a two-parter. Oh, yeah. She, uh... Because I think he, Jason swipes and cuts Will with the machete. And then they're all like trying to like hit him to get him off of, you know, Will or whatever. Yeah. And then Jason's like, get off, asshole. And then she flies like. Is, that what, is that what he says? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, <laughs> hits, hits uh, Linderman and then he gets like the. Yeah, cut. Linderman gets cut. I do remember yeah. that. But yeah. Which has the weirdest. He has like the weirdest death, I think, in this. Because he's smiling. Yeah, and it's just like he kind of just does a quiet death. Like, yeah, it's a very rare one. It's the honorable and quiet death. Yeah, he's which a, they never do in any Jason movie or, or Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think Linderman's death is very genuine. I oh, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can tell when he does die that you do tell that they have some kind of like connection right there. What do you think about this whole fight in the cabin between uh, Freddy versus Jason? This is like the one of like it's two fights. Why, out. It's round two. Why isn't Freddy dead? Like right after this, he cabin should be dead fight? as fuck, dude. Yeah, because that's the whole idea of bringing him out in the real world. Is like once he's dead, he's dead. Yeah, until somebody remembers him and he comes back in the dream world. And Jason just annihilates him, and dude, he's just he, like, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, <laughs> like, it really knows. shouldn't be. There should be no fight. I mean, yeah. since Freddy is just a. That's like skinny dude in the real world now. There's no, he has no. Advantage. No, he knows martial arts. He remember all the the judo he learned while he's in the dream world. I do remember. That's that. part of his like dream <laughs> dream training. <laughs> When he got hired up for the three out of Sandler or the three out of Sandler. Oh, I forgot Sandler, about yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. Or the magic bullets from Who Friend Roger Ever. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man, good good callback to all that. I forgot about it. Um, so, yeah, we have this whole fight scene that ends up leading to a construction site where it looks like they're going to build uh, new cabins, I believe. Uh, I think it was specifically set up for their fight. No, it was built up for something. I can't remember <laughs> oh, what it I said. Know. Yeah, it was no. about like a new campsite. But uh, this actually looks pretty cool. I like this. Well, actually, before the whole fight happens, um, we get Kelly Rowland who gets killed. She Just, talks a lot justifiably of, so. Well, she talks a lot of trash to Freddy, and Freddy just kind of takes it. Freddy! How sweet. Dark meat. So you're the one everyone's afraid of? Tell me something. What kind of faggot runs around in a Christmas sweater? I mean, come on, get real. You're not even scary. You're not even scary. Oh. 
So Kelly Rowland ends up getting smacked by Jason. She dies instantly. And then we got the rest of the fight around the construction scene and on the dock as well. What do we think about the uh, this whole final fight? Um, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's like orchestrated pretty well. It's cool, but it's it it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. It's like it's really ridiculous. It's just the I think it fits the fine. Epic it's, matchup. Yeah. So what doesn't everyone's fit? Everyone's been waiting for. What doesn't fit? But like, it, I guess it's weird because it's like everyone's like waiting for this matchup, right? Yeah. But they literally have to cut into, like, like, okay, Freddy's only powerful in dreams. Jason's only powerful in real life. And since we're on... There's no even ground. Since Jason has the home advantage here. Yeah. He's in the real world. But Freddy had it earlier, like, in Freddy... But, like I said, like, all the movies we've ever watched, we've never seen Freddy Krueger use, like, martial arts to fight or kill his victims. Yeah. Actually, there is one. I know what you're going to say. It's the fifth one. Nightmare... Four, uh, Nightmare Five. Oh, it's, it is five. Yeah, yeah. it's five. Yeah, he actually fights it's that Christian Slater did. Yeah, it's a Christian the, Slater, the martial artist. <laughs> yeah, damn it. Yeah, no, I mean, like I kind of like damn the way they, <laughs> the fighting style they gave him though is like that fast, quick fighting style. He gave him like um like uh Neo from the Matrix, where he's like <laughs> his leg is like really flexible and he's kicking yeah like backwards into the face, you know. <laughs> But it's just, it's just kind of weird seeing Freddy Krueger do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just, I don't know. And I think once you realize, once you're this far in the movie, you kind of realize, like, yeah, I guess them fighting wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go you're with it. You're 90 minutes into the movie and you've already spent your ticket money. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, I guess what I found in my head really doesn't make sense. You know what, you, some, yeah. you, know what, uh, you know what this matchup is like, though, right? What? It's like Jason is Superman and Batman's Freddy Krueger. Where yeah. it would be, yeah, it would, I kind of get that. It would be yeah. done in seconds. Yeah, like, right. it, should, it should be done in seconds. It should be done in seconds. I'll give that. Because this movie is way too long. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I mean, I'll tell you what. That's one thing about this movie. I do not remember this movie feeling so long. It's like an hour and like thirty five minutes. I, I, I think it's because we've been waiting for the fight. We already know everything. They already spilled yeah. all yeah. the info. And then, the like, there's minutes. an hour where it's just kind of like, hey, let's go they, to this party. Let's yeah. go to it's the like hospital. Like a typical slasher film, like. But it's not even a slasher. There's no like, like there's no flow. like tense or anxious moments where it's like uh somebody's stalking them. You don't know who it is, but we know who it is yeah. because it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you know? so there's no mystery to it. You're just kinda like No. All right, just get to the damn battle. Yeah. There's no like, hey babe, where'd you go? <laughs> and then like, you know No babe. Yeah, no babe, no. I I tell you what, man, there are so many scenes from this movie that are memorable just because of the trailer. Oh yeah, like when uh, Jason's walking by here and the propane or not the propane, like the air cylinders yeah. are oh, yeah. flying by, and um, Kelly Rowland says something earlier in the movie, and she's like, "We're not safe um, anywhere or, or, or oh, injuries. away or asleep yeah, or something yeah, like that." Yeah. And very uh, memorable. I think the trailer is probably the best part of this movie. I remember <laughs> that trailer came out. I was like geeking. I was yeah. so excited because this is a movie you think would never actually happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's been. It was in. I feel like it was in kind of in development hell for a while. And oh then yeah, it was like trying i think there's like so many iterations of like the script or whatever no one thought it was ever going to happen and then this is, well now the this new is one this now is the that. the new one's been talked about for like 10 plus years now is jason versus freddy versus ash well, they i think did, they kind of they, debunked it no they did a comic book dude oh they, yeah they ended up doing a comic book out yeah. of it but like that was the talk was like hey we're gonna do it now we're gonna do this yeah, one this yeah. will be the sequel to freddy versus jason mm-hmm. which would have been cool but i don't know it's just such a random th- but again it would be like yeah, I don't know if Ash would really stand a chance against... Uh... I just think it'd be bizarre. I mean, the whole thing about Ash is when he fights people, he's fighting, like, dozens of people that, you know, at once, you know, whatever, he's, like, cutting people up. Yeah. There's only two people, so it's not like he's gonna kill... And you know what I mean? Yeah. That's his yeah. thing. All he's gotta do is get close once, and then yeah. that's it. And then if he gets close and he fails, he dies. Although yeah. it'd be kind of cool to see him doing, like, some one-liners versus like, his fight against Freddy Krueger, where just, they just trade one-liners back yeah. and forth. Just trying to one up each other. It sounds like they should just do an episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Dude, I love that show so much. Like a holiday special. I like it. Do you guys? They we actually. Haven't, we haven't watched it. Dude, it. watch it. It's so like, we will. We will. I'm like I, sec- I two, de- two episodes uh, in the second season. It's amazing. Why it's on freaking stars, man? Like no, nobody no, owns no stars. stars. <laughs> yeah, no one watch stars. I don't know how like it got put on stars. Like Showtime, I could have seen. Yeah. Like people have Showtime. I don't know anybody who has stars. I think it just got renewed for a third season too. Did cool. it? I think it did. Yeah, I I, be wrong. yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. But you yeah. know, actually, speaking of the whole like development hell with this movie, I think they tried to make this back in like eighty eight, eighty nine, or something like that. And is that why they did like the Freddy and Jason goes to hell or something? Well, they did. Uh, it was. A... 
they kind of tried to do that when they couldn't get the rights for it. They did Freddy versus, um, or not Freddy, uh, Jason versus Tina, I think it is. Uh, the psychic one. Oh, okay. So that was their kind of like making up for it. You know so what? That's what a... it was. That was what it was supposed to be. Yeah. For sure. Okay, do you, okay I didn't know if I made yeah, it. Yeah, I familiar. think it was supposed to be Freddy. They couldn't get the rights, so they, had to, they just did Tina, like the psychic. That's oh, why, really? That's why it's the only one in the Friday and, like series that's like really off. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. Because all the rest of them were just like normal Friday 13s, but this one, he's fighting a uh, psychic. You know, mm-hmm. it's so yeah. left field. But uh, as they continue to fight, they end up getting out on the dock. We're back to Freddy vs. Jason, by the way. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, they're fighting out in the dock. We get some pretty gruesome scenes. We get Freddy throwing his fingers into Jason's eyes, which look pretty cool. Yeah, this is where it gets kind of just like, they're just basically trading blows and super brutal. and Like some, death blows. And for some reason, Jason's bleeding red blood. Yeah, yeah. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. <laughs> And uh, they end up setting the dock on fire via end of Evan and Costello meet Frankenstein. Oh, I was going to think. I, was I just watched say, it this uh, week, so it was like ironic that I was like, oh, I was like, that's exactly the way they got rid of Frankenstein in that movie. They I set was, the dock on fire. I was thinking the end of uh, Firestorm, I think, with uh, Howie Long and William Forsythe. <laughs> the action movie. Okay. The epic action movie from the 90s. Yeah. Where it's a firefighter. Yeah. I never saw it, but I remember it. <laughs> So yeah, they set the gasoline on fire. As, well, at first, Lori runs out of the house oh, with yeah. two uh, flaming sticks. We need a slow motion scene right Dude, here. Dude, and it's so like epic. And yeah. she launches them out there and sets the... And uh, she eats shit when she trips on that log. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. <laughs> wait, did that really happen? <laughs> no. Okay, I didn't think so. I was like, wait, did I miss something? <laughs> uh, yeah, they set the dock on fire. And um, we think that's the end. It's not because... Jason yeah, stabs. They're just, they're just like trying to just keep throwing shit in there. Well, Jason stabs Freddy with his own arm. Yeah. And then Lori cuts off Freddy's head. Yep. And that's she it. Says, Welcome to my world, bitch. Yeah. And that's the end of the movie. They walk off. But then we cut to. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. I don't know where we're going. Yeah. Um, oh, water. <laughs> the band Water? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you remember that band Water that they used in the What a lame name for a band. <laughs> we are Water. <laughs> we are Water. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is supposed to be the next day. It is. Or it's like, this is they the swam. I always, when I was younger, I thought they'd ended up in like a different part of the world. Oh. Yeah, it's very dreamlike. It is. Yeah. Because the next day it's it actually, I think, my favorite shot of the entire movie. It looks awesome. The cinematography on this looks great. But Jason walks out of the foggy uh, lake. And he's walking out, and he has Freddy's head in his hand. Yeah. And it's supposed to be like Jason won. But as you get closer to Freddy's head, you see him wink, cut the black, cue uh, water. <laughs> yeah, the band water. The band water. <laughs> End of moving. Nobody wins. Yeah. All right. Whatever you think about it, Hanta. The only thing worth a while about this movie is the fighting, the fight scenes. Other than that, it's one of the more boring uh, stories of all the movies. Really? Oh, yeah. For sure. Okay. Oh. No, I just I don't I like I think I, I'm gonna cut to me. I mean Hi. that's I mean that's what they I mean that's what they built this movie on. I like this one. Fighting. I think this is a fun I, I think one. we definitely built this movie up. Dude, this movie was amazing when I was younger and watching it oh, again. Oh, I loved the shit out of it when did, I was younger. Okay. It's not it does not hold up as much as I remember. Yeah. I don't think it's bad though. It's just I remember it being like epic and I couldn't wait to watch it and I was like Okay, it's good. It's not. I think if they yeah. would have uh, not explained everything in the first uh, narration by Freddy Krueger, yeah, it could have been more interesting. I agree. I think it's about like ten years too late. Oh, oh, 100% I think that's the sure. biggest problem with this movie. Like, if it was, no, like, I don't. I, I disagree. I, because yeah, no, I, I got you. Yeah, I supposed, think if it was no. like right before no. Scream, like this would have been like a perfect like. Yeah, do it in your Jason goes to hell or something, or like yeah, yeah. like do it in the early nineties because you know when like, he goes to hell, it's like the very end of the movie. Yeah, and it had been like perfect right there. That was their sweet spot, and yeah. I think it's like ten years too late. Because Jason goes to hell is essentially like the Halloween three of the bunch. Yeah, I feel like, and what the nightmare, and I guess they don't really do it with nightmare that much. With well, like, I mean, like when was the last nightmare before this? Is ninety one? I think ninety one. And what's the last Friday thirteenth? Is probably like ninety one, ninety two. No, it was yeah. uh, Jason goes to goes uh, takes Manhattan. That's eighty. No, Jason goes to hell. Well, no, I mean before Hell, right? Or no, no. Oh, what's oh. what's the last Jason movie? Was that Goes to Hell or was yeah, that Jason X? It was Good. Go, oh, was, uh, Jason X is late nineties. Oh yeah, no. so, yeah. Jason X was before this. Okay. Yeah. So by that point, Jason's already been blown out. So we haven't had like a true Jason movie since early nineties. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just um, think if they would have done just it. It's weird because it's like, what a, like, like, way to, like, you know, it's a, th- a callback just, that's almost, like, 15 years old. Totally shoehorn, I feel like, the two characters. And this is why, okay, and this is also why this came at the end of that, like, MTV horror movie era. Yeah. Because, like, they had pushed the slasher films as much as they could go. So, they're like, okay, let's just, let's do Freddy vs. Jason. We'll make some money off of it. And, like. No, I don't think that's what it was at all. I think it was them trying to get the rights to it. You know, but I don't, that's what I'm saying. I don't think anybody was going to relinquish it until they're like, hey, like, we're running, like, both companies were hurt, and so it's like, let's, let's do this. Mm-hmm. I think this movie would have been a lot worse had it been made in the mid-90s, because that's when both franchises were kind of running on Steam at that point. I feel like that's why they did this movie. What do you mean? The the <clears throat> last two entries were, were not really, I don't think, well-received, yeah. and, like you said, running on Steam, so they had to kind of re- revitalize both series at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. So they did Jason takes or Jason versus Freddy, which I still don't understand because movie huge hit. And then what do they do after that? They, nothing comes out for a while. And they they go, they they go into remake mode. Yeah. Like, 10 years later. Granted, yeah, it's a, yeah, like, I think Friday remake is 2009, so it's six years after, and then, uh, 2010, I think, is Nightmare, so, like, seven years. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I thought the Nightmare remake is pretty bad. Yeah, I don't like it at all. I didn't see it. I do kind of like, I do kind of like the Friday remake. The Friday remake is good. I, I think for the fact that he runs. Yeah, I fucking love that opening scene where he runs at the dude and slices him in the head, and you're like, "Oh fuck!" You don't like, expect it vicious, at all. Like, he runs. He you runs. know that movie gets shit on a lot. I've heard people only really complain about the the tunnels. Oh, yeah, really? I thought I liked the tunnels. I liked them. I thought it was a cool explanation of why he teleports. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a good starter first movie for that, like bringing it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but like they like everyone like shits on that movie a lot. I, I think out of all the remakes, the, I think that one's probably my favorite. Yeah, I, I like Halloween's. I like it over Halloween. I don't think Halloween's really that great. I like it over Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then Nightmare is not really that great. So Hellraiser is like really the only one that hasn't been. Yeah, I'm surprised Candyman hasn't been touched either. That could be actually kind of a good one to do. Yeah, because uh, the the first one's actually pretty good. Yeah, I remember the first one being pretty good. Man, if we got a monster mash of like all those serial killers, oh yeah, oh man, they're maybe, actually maybe um, a shit show of a movie. <laughs> cinema quality episode <laughs> future episode they actually um they, they set a date for the new uh friday 13th movie did they uh, i know they were talking found footage for a while which would be dumb I, as shit i they still haven't announced what it's going to be about but um it's october of 2017 wow so, I mean, right they, now we're looking about a year they, I guess. they really push wow. i would say they really push that shit out like as fast as possible. So you mean well, a no, year I guess they, they've had yeah. the year script. From now we'll have, have another Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, movie. and like they're not even started like rem- like. But no, the script's, been, saying, they, oh, the script's ahead. been done. I guess there was another rights issue because oh, okay. the script was done by the guy who wrote Prisoners. Oh, which is a prisoner of Prisoners. Prisoners, prisoners with T. Jackman. With T. Jackman. Yeah. yeah. So I am very interested to see what uh, that guy is directing. Arrival with uh, Amy Adams. Adams. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's his movie. Oh, I know. oh, I mean the same director of yeah. Prisoners? Yeah. Oh, or you're saying writer, though. The writer, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so we got that within the next year. Oh, man, I had another... Oh, fun trivia for the movie. You guys like fun trivia? Maybe, if it's worth it. If it's worth our while. Jason Bateman was supposed to be in this movie. As the sheriff? As Tommy Jarvis. Oh. What? Yeah. Because uh, they were I originally... kind of like that. That would have been awesome. It was originally going to be... Um, Tommy Jarvis, Corey Feldman, but he was not around. No, I, I mean he could have. Okay. So yeah, he was supposed to play Tommy Jarvis. Um, another fun fact: uh, Brian Singer showed up on set because he's a huge fan of both franchises. And then the last one, this one's just kind of bizarre. Uh, some of the scripts had Freddy peeing in a Holy Grail, a boxing scene, a hockey scene, Freddy getting beamed by a satellite. <laughs> See, we we actually, you know what? A hockey scene would have been awesome. Yeah, it actually would have been. That yeah. would have been the best time to just incorporate yeah. the hockey, like other than the the billboard they see in Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah, actually, I kind of agree. With that, that would have been it right there. The first introduction between Freddy and Jason. Let's haunt him in a hockey rig. Make fun of him. Yeah, why not? I think that'd have been kind of cool. No, he was supposed to get beamed by a satellite ray into the sun. Wait, what? What? I'm just telling you, what I'm reading. Wait, what does beam beam mean? Like, like satellite ray. Oh, well, like uh, it's a Canadian satellite, right? Like if you're getting, I like it. Yeah, callback. Let's call back. Yep. 
last week. Um, Freddy was going to have to collect 13 dream demons to collect his powers. Oh, man. <laughs> Ten more of those flying demons? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alice, Jacob, and Tommy from the other Friday Thirteenth, oh, okay. and Freddy's are supposed to be made. See, characters. I think that's what um that's actually what they do. I think in the the Ash comic book, oh, they do bring him they in. They actually bring like all the characters in. Oh, uh, really? In the storyline, so you got like Tommy Jarvis. I think you got like maybe Nancy, and then you got the uh, Patricia Arquette character. I think. Okay. Or does she get killed? No, no. she doesn't. No. Yeah, I think she's also in it. That'd be kind of cool because then you can have like that. Oh yeah, that, that character did get killed. It's whatever she the. Did? It's yeah. whatever the. Uh, what? Uh, she gets killed in the fifth one. Yeah, it's one of the dream child. Is it Patricia Arquette? Yeah, it is. It is. Or she gets killed in the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. but no, it's, it's a different. It's, somebody else plays it's her. It's the the dream child uh, mom in the fifth one. Yeah, she like appears in the comic book as well. Oh, really? Right. So it's like all these characters from all the movies. They all show up and stuff. Which, oh, really? That's kind of cool. That's pretty badass. That's cool. Like that. Um. Oh, another thing too they were gonna do was they were gonna have uh, a giant wall built around Camp Crystal Lake so nobody could enter. Which I thought would be kind of neat too, just kind of like block it off. Trump's America. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Trump's so. America. But no, that's uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Um, let's go ahead and jump to the second part of the podcast where Matt will lead us on what is it, Matt? Monster Mash movies. Monster Mash movies. We'll see you in the second half. On a journey through Monster Mash movies. All right, so let's just talk about some Monster Mash movies. Okay. Monster Mash movies are a mash of different a collections of monsters. Ooh. That have already been in their own kind of films. Yeah. So, for instance, I think like the first, like the really one to start this off, were... Evolution or not Evolution. Uh, <laughs> oh uh, man, <laughs> wait, wait. The, the David Duchovny movie Evolution. <laughs> Underworld, I would say. Underworld. Underworld could be one. I think the first one to start it off was um, like House of Dracula, House of Frankenstein, because they had the Wolfman. Forty years before the movie, I listed off. <laughs> yeah, so like that's like their monster match. It was like Universal yeah. got these monsters together, and then mm-hmm. they made fun of them, of course, and like Evan and Costello meet Frankenstein, yeah. which is a fantastic movie. Yes, I've it never is. Never seen it. I think it's the number one Halloween movie of all time for me. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I, I think actually, just, oh, was, I didn't, I didn't know you were gonna say for me. I thought you were gonna say it's the number one Halloween movie of all time. Yeah, <laughs> just for me. Um, so what's some other monster match movies? Um, I'm trying to think outside of the box because you got the obvious ones. You got like Monster Squad. That's actually, I watched that before this. Did, did you? I did. I still haven't seen that in years. I bought that on Blu-ray along with uh, a couple other DVDs. Oh, what else did you buy? <laughs> uh, Clue. Nice. Executive Decision starring Kurt Russell. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Pit. <laughs> uh, there's one more. I can't remember what it is though. Nice. Hmm. But that sounds like fun. I'm trying to think of other monster mashups. You got movies like Woof. Cause you what? Got, no. Yeah, you got Woof and you got James Spader. What the fuck are you the talking The two different types about? of monsters. Because James Spader is more like your human monster. Oh, he's monster. like, a, like a, a human. He's like, yeah. yeah I see no, I can't think of anything. It, monster Mash is not as popular as it used to be back in the day. Which is a shame because it's actually fun when you're watching a movie and then another character shows up. And you're like, oh, that's cool. You're like... It's you know that you've always seen them separately, but when together you get excited, and that's why Freddy vs. Jason I think was so big mm-hmm. is because you got excited to see these two characters finally come together. Yeah, okay. I think well, I mean I think of recent ones, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a really a good huge, one. I think that's a huge monster mash. Yeah, like you got all these different monsters in here, and like the best part is like seeing the ones that are, are in the background. Yeah, and you're trying to like I think that's what I like the most. It's like a game. Is you're trying to figure out like where they're from. Yeah, like there's like the Hellraiser kind of like because it's not like and... it's not directly uh, pulled from those movies or like stories or anything. They're all kind of like uh, new interpretations. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's kind of guessing like cool guessing like oh this is from like you see a clown you're like oh that's Pennywise it's supposed to be Pennywise the clown. Yeah, and then you got like unicorns which is like. Uh, from My Little Pony, I guess. Yeah, like, sure. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the horror book. <laughs> yeah, like, sure. But, like, um, Waxwork is a major one. Yep. You That's know? The, uh, the second movie I watched in preparation so, for this. Does okay, it still well, hold up? Because I don't think it holds up. You know what? Uh, that movie could have easily been PG-13. But okay. there are some graphic violence oh, in that movie. Oh, shit. That movie is super graphic. It is I remember a head brutal. crushing. I remember a head There's crushing. There's that. There's a, a werewolf split somebody in half. Okay. Rips them apart. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The main character's uncle gets his head ripped off at the very end, just because. Yeah. Why not? Oh yeah. That's like, right. The fight is already like the movie's like practically done, and it's like, oh, 
Uh, there's a werewolf behind him. He rips his head off. We got five thousand dollars more. To spend. Yeah, we need to do something with special effects. The makeup's awesome in that movie. It's pretty. Too. It's it pretty damn good. good. Yeah. yeah. So this genre is like extremely hard. I, like I think it's pretty hard to do. It's hard to do. Yeah. Because you have to have an excuse for these characters to meet up. Yeah. And you, and it's like it's it's hard to do because you have to do it in a non corny way. But and you you're almost it. pretty sure comes off corny every time you do it. Yeah. Like so oh, I man. I mean, you think about it, it's like, oh, how is the creature from the Black Lagoon supposed to meet up with Dracula? And it's like, how are you supposed to do it in a non like it's pretty tough way? It's yeah. really tough. Because I say Monster Squad does it all right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they don't really explain how. You know. No, they just like all meet up. It's just they're just they town. just exist in this world, and they just happen to meet up on the day the world's supposed to end. I guess. Yeah. So does this genre? work in any other i'm sorry does this small little niche genre work in any other larger genres it like, could but they're not used because I mean, no instance, one i mean there's no movies that have like tom cruise from mission impossible and jason Bourne together you know like with that i see it man like now all of a sudden it sounds kind of goofy because you're like does it only work because it's campy because campy only exists within no horror? if there was a yeah. movie with ethan hunt and jason Bourne, it'd probably be pretty badass yeah oh it, man that could be kind of cool. I, I well, you kind of look at too, like the Expendables. Expendables is like a monster mash. Movie. It is. Yeah. Yeah. People doing steroids over the years. <laughs> yeah. they come Those movies these. are great. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. They're a godsend. <laughs> the godsend. Um, I'm trying to think. That's kind of like for a while. So there you're, was you're, you're, a talk about Predator, wasn't there? About Predator Rambo. having. Oh uh, no! Like oh, oh, they were mashing up characters to put in Predator. And I can't remember if it was like a, it was another action hero character that they were going to put in the Predator world, because like yeah. pre- hell, Predator came out of a joke in Hollywood. Yeah, the really? joke was yeah, the joke was uh, Rocky versus an alien. Oh, okay. because like who's Rocky going to fight in the next Rocky movie? Like an alien, yeah. and it all started as a Sylvester Stallone project. Well, I was going to say, are you thinking about uh, how for a second they're going to do a Rambo movie with like Rambo versus an alien experiment? Did you hear about that? No. Yeah, that was going to be a thing for a while. That's was that's it? what Matt was talking. Oh, was that was it Rambo? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was Rambo versus an alien. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. was it they, Rambo? Okay, they were talking yeah. about doing like within like the last four years or so. They were talking about doing another Rambo movie, but this time it's Rambo versus like an uh, an alien that ex- escapes like a, a science lab of some sort. Yeah, and they were actually going to try to do it. Yeah, it was like that. Nah, it makes no sense because you had this is your what fifth movie. You can't just incorporate aliens five movies in. Dude, you got to yeah. give him props for taking. The Rocky franchise and the Rambo franchise, and going out on huge high notes oh, yeah, both dude. of them. Yeah, because they could easily fade away. And that that last Rambo man, that's Rambo probably was brutal as fuck. That is a brutal but it's amazing. Movie. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's talk about a, a couple of monster mashes. <laughs> you got Frankenstein's monster versus the army in Burma. That's for <laughs> two monsters. You know, that's when we actually didn't bring up the um, uh, Alien vs Predator. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's what that was huge too, and it came, was that before that was before. it was uh, it was around two thousand. I know it was after it was after. That's right. Yeah, it was two thousand four, um, I think. Yeah. yeah, and that was. Would you did you guys like that movie? It was pretty dumb. I like it's it's that, that really that, cool concept. It's that PG thirteen, yeah. dude. It's I love PG thirteen rating. I thought the premise was really cool. Oh yeah, for it's that. great. Yeah. It's great because the arcade game that came out like in the nineties was always awesome. Yeah, because you get to play as like predator, and you're just fighting a bunch of aliens, you know. Yeah, but uh, that's like, why would you ever be an alien? <laughs> well, yeah, because aliens are. Yeah, I mean, if you can like command a bunch of aliens, but it does make sense. I completely forgot about fun. Alien vs Predator, but it totally does count. Yeah. But the movie is is weak though, because like you got two pretty hardcore R rated movies, uh, and they're both supposed to be kind of terrifying, but it's just kind of comical, I guess, seeing the two properties go at it, kind of like I guess Freddy vs Jason in yeah. a sense. But because it's always like you look at it and you're like it sounds cool in your head, and then you're like, well, and then you see it and like, oh well, I guess like the predator could just take out the aliens really quickly. Yeah, yeah. you got uh, mm-hmm. a predator that wields multiple advanced technology, technological weapons, and then just blowing through aliens. Yeah, and it's like there's no way the predator's gonna lose this. Okay, so let me ask you. I would actually like to do that movie for the podcast. I think it'd be an interesting one to talk about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, what Monster Mash do you want to see? Uh, like, which characters do you, would it, you love to see in a movie together? Is it Monster Mash? Is it it's specifically monsters, though? Like, Let's just do monsters. Okay. It could be anything. No no crossovers right. between, like... I'm, I'm throwing out I'm throwing out um, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Okay. And a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to see it. <laughs> that sounds like... All right, cool, man. You know what? I got it. 
What? Child's Play, Chucky, versus the Puppet Master. Just toys? Yeah. It's called, the movie's called Toys? <laughs> yeah, it's Robin Williams. It's called, they already made it. It's Robin Williams. <laughs> it's called and, The Toy Box? Yeah, The Toy Box. <laughs> Chucky will be I'll like... I'll meet you in the Toy Box. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see... I want to see Michael Myers with someone, but I can't really figure out what, like... It's hard, it's hard to do it because Michael Myers is the slowest moving person in the world. Yeah. He's like a, tur- he's like a turtle. I would like to see a John Carpenter mix up somewhere. I would like to see those characters mix up somewhere. I would see like, like a, Jack Burton like meets Jack, <laughs> Jack Burton meets Snake Plissken. Oh, dude, yeah, it's just they... Kurt Russell talking to himself the whole time. <laughs> movie. Like, <laughs> this is weird. I think I would like to see something like Beetlejuice meet somebody. Like that could be kind of cool. That'd be uh, cool versus uh, versus Patrick Swayze from Ghost. <laughs> Ghostbusters versus Patrick Swayze. Oh Ghost. man, that's just kind of sad because <laughs> like Patrick Swayze means well, you know. I know, but they're Ghostbusters. Or be Ghostbusters versus the demon ghosts you see in Ghost. Oh, those scary looking things. That'd be terrifying, dude. That movie is terrifying with those ghosts in it. Yeah, man, you got me all excited. Like all these things are running through my head right yeah, now. Like, I'm what, like, what do you got? Come on, dude, just open something. up your toy box and play. Uh, Richard Dreyfus um, from <sighs> Always versus Patrick Swayze. <laughs> from Ghost. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Two ghosts that mean very well. But they are in love with the same woman. Oh. And, like, that's what it is. They're both, like, trying to get her attention in the afterlife. They're, come on. Oh, it's man. pretty good. Okay. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to throw out a character. A uh, character that just popped in my head. I'm going to say, um, the Terminator. Okay. Oh, man. I, that's so weird. I was just thinking the Terminator. Oh, yeah. Versus I think they did a Terminator. Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> well, the Terminator <laughs> wins. So there's yeah. that. That's your thought. <laughs> 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 the only person that thinks that Richard Dreyfuss can win in that fight. Uh, I'm trying to think what else, like what big big properties uh, that we have. Jaws versus Piranha, 3D. <laughs> so Sci-Fi Channel original. So nobody just everyone's just like get out of the get out of the ocean. Like, just yeah. let them fight easy. it out. Yeah, easy. Just get out. Just don't go swimming. Just we'll fight. Let them fight it out and see who wins. Yeah. Okay. Um, Transformer. <clears throat> okay. okay. Versus. Okay. Pinhead from Hellraiser. <laughs> what? And Richard Dreyfus. I guess they wouldn't be able to die. The Cenobites wouldn't be able to die. They so. wouldn't. They're not human. I don't know, man. It's just so tough. I feel like I'm on the spot. And then there's so many plot holes with Transformers that they, like, the robots tend to come back to life somehow. I know. So. I know. Robots, the same thing, I Robots guess. is yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. Um. Okay. How about Robocop versus Terminator? They've done that, like, in, like, video yeah. or whatever. They Phantom. should do something with... See, and that's what I was trying to think. I was like, what would Terminator best matchup was? Because it was, like... I remember, like, in the 90s, the big three sci-fi was, like, Terminator, Aliens, and uh, Predator. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And, like, those three were always, like, they had kids toys. Well, I think it was because were, it's, like, like uh, putting them together and... James Cameron, like, right? Yeah, and all three of them involved James Cameron somehow. Yeah. No, except Predator. Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. I want to do something with Beetlejuice. I think Beetlejuice would be awesome, and I cannot Ooh, match Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice up because Beetle- uh, Beetlejuice first okay. Candyman. Mm. <laughs> yeah, say both their names repeatedly to get them. To oh, go. oh man. Yeah, it'd be kind you, of... so you put them together. You got Candy Juice or Beetle Man, and it's just like a anomaly, like a like a thing. <laughs> oh, Kill me! Just like <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. I, I can't really. I guess this is like the big one. I can't really think of any. Actually, pinheads. Beetlejuice versus Pinhead from Hellraiser is actually pretty accurate, <laughs> dude. I would love to see Beetlejuice a duel just in hell. Fucking with Pinhead. They're both. They're actually both kind of similar characters if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, they both yeah. can like uh, oh, contort their environments. Like I got Beetlejuice it. versus Freddy Krueger. <laughs> it'll uh, just be like quips all the time. Yeah, that's all. Uh, just fight all right, Jesus. I, I got it. You guys sparked an idea in my head. You got Leprechaun versus the Wishmaster. Oh, Dude, man. that's weird. You said you that. make a wish. No, you make a wish. Like, you, you make, make a wish. wish. No, you make one. <laughs> Hour and a half later, you make a wish. You end credits. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that you would just go away. And he's like, "Oh, that's pretty yeah, solid. yeah." You beat me to the punch. <laughs> no. Wait, who, who said it though? I don't know. Oh, twist ending. It just goes quiet on the credits. It's black, and it's like a art, like, art, oh, house, art house ending. There you go. We got it. Okay, I got it. Scream versus Gone Girl. <laughs> what? what you high i am running out of ideas <laughs> what all right the blob okay versus versus pudding <laughs> versus bill cosby and his <laughs> army of, oh his army of pudding pops <laughs> okay the blob versus slime from ghostbusters 2 
Okay, that's a good one. I'm pretty okay. sure the blob would win. I don't know who would win at the end of it because you're like, which one's which? <laughs> you probably would be. <laughs> it'd really be, it'd it be another uh, Candyman Beetle situation where they just morph together. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm okay. I'm throwing out another one. You got okay, Vigo from Ghostbusters two. Okay. All right, versus um, Pinhead from Hellraiser. <laughs> it's just a Pinhead every single time. Oh sure, okay, Vigo from Ghostbusters two. Versus, I'm trying to think of something that has to do with uh, like a painting or art, or um, versus Dorian Dorian Gray. Dorian, Dorian Gray. Gray. There you okay. go. Yeah. All right. Um, God, there's so many. There's so many that you can't like think of all They're of them. They're fun like, though, man. And yeah. I know I'm gonna think of some later on. I'm like, should I? Should yeah, I'm gonna be going that? to bed tonight, and I'm like, oh, that would have been a good one. Hey, can you edit this in? I'm gonna record on my phone real quick. <laughs> Pennywise versus Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, dude, that's messed up. Then you're just like, what the? Who's fighting who? I actually think Pennywise could win in that. Yeah, I think so too. He in the end, he's just a gigantic sprite, like a spider creature. Yeah. Oh yeah, The Shining versus The Stand. The books. (laughs) Wait, the book. The books fight each other. I don't think. I don't think you understand what The Shining (laughs) or The Stand is. How about I know what you did last summer? So the. Oh man, I know what you did last summer versus Scream. Yeah, good one. I know, but these aren't people. These are. And then you could throw in. uh, urban legend. Yeah, if there's an urban legend in there, and then what was that Valentine movie with the uh, David oh, yeah, I'd love to see all of them just, Yeah, all of them fight. Just get all awesome. of them, all those like angsty teens to go at each other. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. epic. That'd be awesome. Let's pitch it. Well, you know they actually just made um, the Grudge versus the Ring. Oh yeah. Yeah, I heard it sucks. Yes. I, I, I heard it wasn't the uh, the best of movies. Why would it? But that's what I mean. Like, uh, I, you heard can't... It, uh, I heard it. I heard it didn't work. Especially with something like that. It's <laughs> too, wasn't for me. It's too serious, like horror films. Yeah. And it's it impossible. just comes, it just comes off as comical. That it should be terrifying. Be. That's yeah. what I'm yeah, saying. Can't be, yeah, can't be. Yeah. It comes. This is like it's. It comes off as campy. So like the only way to do a monster mash is you got to do it just fun. You just got to embrace it and just let it let it happen. Yeah. That's it. You just gotta like it, it. Almost like you have to let it take you, as opposed Ooh, to it yeah. taking it. I like that. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So, final question: If you had to fight one monster, and you have to fight this monster under their circumstances, okay. So, when you who say, would you fight? When you say monster, can it does it have to be human, or does it have to be something supernatural? Or otherworldly? It can be anything, but I'm not saying like you can't say like oh, I would choose Freddy Krueger. I just wouldn't go to sleep. Like, no, you're in his dream. I would take. You're in the dream. You have to fight him. I would take. Ghost face and shoot him in the head. I win. Oh man, that was easy. Man, <laughs> really imaginative answer you just gave there. <laughs> oh, hey, no, really he, imaginative. He asked. I fourteen year old boy answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just get my nunchucks out of my closet. I get my Glock like, that I carry Hi-ya! around all the time. <laughs> um, I would say Cthulhu. Cthulhu. <laughs> what? Did you want an answer or not? Okay, go ahead. You want me to answer your stupid question? The most powerful, like, <laughs> I interdimensional saying, creature I you can Summoned by a cult of worshippers. Yeah, that can't be killed, and you're going to... Right, Don't ahead. ask me a question and mock somehow, me. Somehow he's going to win. That's I want to hear this. Oh, I didn't say I was going to win. Oh. I just said it'd be scary to fight. Oh, I think... Oh, wait. no. I, 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 have, yeah. I have a you love... Have to, you kind of have to come out on top, right. right? I yeah. have a love-hate relationship with Deep Sea. I think it's terrifying and fascinating at the same time. So, I would fight... The Deep Star, Deep Star Six creature. Wait, what? No, I said Cthulhu. Oh. And I would fight him. It'd be easy to just shoot him in the head. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. <laughs> yeah. It all, like a gun, just solves the all problems. Uh, see, I would fight. All right. Can we filter this? Can we filter it? Yeah, it's like. Okay, so. No, are... no human, like, serial killers. All right, no serial like... killers. That's fine. And how about we only do. Original Universal Monsters oh, and wow. okay. New Wave Monsters. I'll call them New Wave Monsters, which wave. is like the new the new killers, which is like Freddy, Jason. Oh, Michael okay. Myers. Okay. So like otherworldly serial killers, pretty much. Yeah. Or not serial. I guess the monsters. Yeah. Okay. So don't, just those. Also, I'd pick like maybe like Cloverfield or something. Oh, wow. You just picked like the biggest beast. I, I want a challenge. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, there you <laughs> See, go. See, very, you would be like something like, I would do like a werewolf, because you, know, like, you love running, and be like, I, I just would love to run. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> or yeah. actually, any of them. Like, Jason would be the same thing. You just run. It's true. Or I think Freddy's Myers. the only one where I feel like I was fucked. Or I was, oh, and, yeah. Oh, and Pinhead. 100%, dude. Pinhead, yeah. I just feel like I'm done. Oh, like, uh, yeah, because he's got control of that world. 
he's like the leader of the Cenobites. But I also love puzzles, so I'd love to put that bad boy <laughs> back together. You know what I mean? That box and just be like, hmm. ding, 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 ding. I would just like ask if he needs any help, like uh, making new puzzles and stuff, and I would just help him out. Oh, you have like your resume? <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, I'm like a master of puzzles. Do you guys need? Do you guys need? Do you guys want some cookies? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want some new like? Puzzles that people can work. What with? are your What are your credentials? Uh, well, I have a podcast, and I went, uh, I went to community college. <laughs> <laughs> I think if anything, I probably. Oh man, they all like suck, don't they? <laughs> I would actually, if I had to pick anybody, I would actually do Count Dracula. Really? Why Count Dracula? I think the concept of vampires has been the most interesting to me. Okay. And I think it'd be also like. Knowing all the lo- the lore to it, yeah, would be actually like awesome, like going up against. Plus, you'd probably end up having to like fight like off as like his his hot brides. Yeah, dude. So you'd be like, man, if I die, like, oh no, oh, I might have a girlfriend, you know, <laughs> naked girl to Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that was on Simpsons. Uh, is that the dude? Yeah, he's talking about how he's gonna like it was a Halloween episode, and Ned was talking about how he could see how people were going to die. Oh. And Homer's like, he's like, Ned's like, I just saw how you could die. He's like, oh my God, is it a naked girl avalanche? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'd probably do Creature from the Black Lagoon. Wow. Because I think that would be, I wouldn't, I, like, I just want to be the easier one to fight because it's, you can actually kill it. Yeah, but then you have to go into its territory, which is underwater. Oh, that shit And it is. can swim fast as shit. Yeah. And all you have is like the, like the bubble suit, like the bubble helmet. Yeah, you know? like, oh! yeah. Like you have to wait. You have to wear the weights, and you're like, Doom. this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think that's uh, gonna wrap up October Scarefest 2016. Um, thank you everybody for listening. We had a pretty good October, I think. We yeah, did, uh, it's actually we did some good movies. Pretty solid. Yeah, we uh, finally watched The Pit. I think, which is the highlight of this entire really. It's a hallmark I, you know, I'm gonna of, say you know, uh, the holiday. I don't know, man. We had a hot, a lot of highlights this October. A lot of hot, hot picks. Hot picks. <laughs> Um, we are going to take a few weeks off, uh, take a nice little break. Um, I and to, I'm like I'm like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, uh, we're going to take a couple breaks off and uh, reschedule some movies, go see some movies in theaters, get everything set. But we do appreciate you guys listening so much. We always do. Please rate and review us on iTunes, uh, Facebook, request movies. We appreciate it all. As always, I am Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Hanto. And we'll see you next time. Oh, and happy Halloween. Woo! I don't I got nothing. Okay.